inside the birds is back what's up everybody it is march madness in the nfl free agency the owners meetings going on in fact jeff mosher and adam kaplan here with you adam kaplan right now is in arizona where the owner back in arizona just a you know a little month after the super bowl right to uh to report on the owners' meetings, which uh, should be fairly interesting if a couple of things pass through. We'll get into that, Adam. But what uh, last time we were in Arizona, the weather was like it was nice, but then it was cold at night. I didn't even realize it got cold in Arizona. I should have. But uh, how is it over yes, there? Beautiful? Yeah. It, 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 from being here for uh, other owners' meetings, particularly at the uh, the Biltmore World be this time, yeah, it gets really chilly at night. But I like this air. I know people say it's a dry air. I actually like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this you know this morning it it was uh, very it was in the like maybe high forties low fifties but I like it it's but it's nothing like Napa air though right Napa air no, Napa's Napa's the best Napa the is Dewey, the best. Uh, Dewey air there yeah yeah uh, all right so that's good we'll we'll get into a little bit of what's going on at owners meetings but obviously since our last podcast Eagles have done a few things major extension for a player some signings interesting signings. That we'll go through. We'll get you the scouting report on that, some contract updates, and then just again taking a look at where the Eagles are as the as we start to head into the less active, less busy, or less sensational part of free agency. But there are still good players uh, to be had out there in free agency, and then maybe the trade market. So we can take a look at that as well. We will have our next Intel with Greg Cosell on Wednesday. I, that, that's a can't miss one. They're all can't miss, but we're going to be doing corner backs as part of our NFL draft preview series with Greg. Last week, we did pass rushers. Um, it was an interesting group of pass rushers from Will Anderson to edge rushers that we did. Uh, Tyree Williams, a lot of interesting names out there. So if you haven't caught it yet, uh, please go check it out because Greg uh, Greg gave some really interesting breakdowns and in some of the guys. Uh, I don't want to say he wasn't a fan of it. It's a deep class, but I think some of the guys who get a lot of accolades, Greg had some questions about, some legit questions about where they fit in the NFL landscape. So I would check that. Were you a little surprised by some of his, his tape break observations? I had heard, I think you heard the same thing, that this is a deep, pass rusher draft but it's not elite even close to elite they're not right. a lot of elite rushers if if there are any there are a lot of right. good ones and greg but greg's also hard grader and remember he's trying to project the traits of these players to the next level that's all you really can do based on tape study of college players because they're they're you know, 20 21 22 year olds are trying to project what they can be and if he sees a guy who's got some stiffness i remember he and i had the same notes in thibodeau last year coming to the draft and the tape showed last year, just ironically, it showed after he was drafted that he's not super bendy. He's long, but he's not super bendy. And it becomes a narrative because the guy had a great college career. It's kind of like with Clowney. He's not a very good pass rusher, though the hype coming out of South Carolina, was like, oh, my God, this guy will be the best pass rusher ever. Not really mm-hmm. factual based on tape study. Right. Right, and that did, did get that impression from Greg. I think defensive edge rusher in general, Adam, is one of those positions where traits are really, really vital in telling you what a guy is going to be at the NFL level. Sure. Um, you don't, I mean, listen, you don't need to be size, height, weight, speed, explosion, but it sure seems like when you're Miles Garrett and you have it all and you get drafted number one overall, there's a, as long as your your head's on straight you're it's a pretty good chance you're going to be a really good player in the league and he has been one of the best uh you know you remember Derek Barnett coming out of Tennessee he was not a traits guy he was bendy but didn't have yeah. great get off didn't have great explo- in fact his bend is what was his best asset and he obviously has been a player in the league who's not really been like 10 to 12 sacks a year and and somewhat disappointing at times not a disciplined player so i always think of traits as being really cardinal for edge rushers and you know to hear greg talk about some of the guys here they didn't seem to have there wasn't one guy who really stood out that has all those type of miles garrettish type type traits where you expect 10 to 12 sacks a year from the edges now cornerbacks there are a lot of guys with traits so that's why you're going to want to check out our next uh episode with him because there are some really good corners who have some explosive uh tendencies and some good height weight speed uh numbers 
Uh, and again, there's no sauce garden this year at the corner. But as you're saying, it's still pretty good. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see what he says about how these guys transition. And in, in talking about the Eagles here, as we as we go through the show, when you look at edge rushers or, or stand up outside linebackers, and then of course hand hand in the dirt guys, the Eagles certainly could use at least one guy. In fact, I'd be very surprised if they didn't draft one. Mm. They, they because of the, the lack of depth. At, at outside linebacker. And then with BG up there, he's defying time. It's amazing what he's doing. Yes. And sweat, of course. But look, they could certainly use another guy. Yes, they could. Uh, that defense needs a whole lot. So it'll be an interesting draft. All right. We want to say thanks to our and welcome aboard to our friends, uh, Phil and Sam. They are our newest Patreon customers. So welcome aboard. We hope that you take advantage of uh, our Discord chats. Uh, Adam does one every Wednesday at 8 o'clock chatting with our Patreon crew on the Discord channel. And, of course, uh, as soon as you sign up, you're privy to all of our interviews, our extra podcasts, our Ask ITV live streams that we've done. Last week's Ask ITV live stream was awesome. We had at least, I don't know, 8 to 10 people who were involved. It was great. A lot of really good questions. And look forward to doing another one. We had a feeling that once we got through free agency, there would be a lot to talk about. So, uh, it was cool. It was it was like uh, the screen looked like the Brady Bunch thing, right? Because there's like <laughs> ten to twelve boxes there of people just uh, going back and forth there. That's you got. It was really up. cool. We saw some new people in there. It was really cool, and we went an hour. You know, we we went uh, usually go half an hour, forty five minutes. We went an hour. In fact, we hope the next one in April because it'd be closer to the draft. Would love to see like thirty or forty people in there, if not more. I don't know how. I have no idea how we could accommodate that, but. Uh, I love it, it's really cool to see people, and we're, we're hoping at one point with you guys to do a live in person event, maybe for the fall to kick off the season. We'll, we'll have to see, but that's some that would be our that's our long range goal to have you all in person and maybe may and have maybe have some guests, but uh, that's down the road. We definitely want to do that someday, absolutely. There's someone who gave us a tip on a good idea for a Patreon concept that we're going to talk about and try to execute too. I'll uh, share that with you pretty okay. soon. All right, let's get into um, some of the things that the Eagles did in the past week or since our last podcast came out. One of them, I think, answers sort of a lingering question that we had going into the offseason. Now, the the action that the Eagles make seemingly answers that question, Adam. Lane Johnson gets a one-year extension. Uh, and it's not meaning he wasn't up at the end of this year. It's one year added to whenever his contract was up. Uh, officially, which I think still had a year or two left on it. Do you remember the old? Yeah, he was signed. Yeah, he he, he was signed through twenty twenty five. Right. With three voidables. <laughs> I haven't of got course. the breakdown yet. I it's funny if it went through twenty thirty. Wouldn't surprise me. But the big reason that uh, you and I got a tip at the the combine that something was probably going to happen one way or the other, a structure or an extension. Mm -hmm. But from Lane's standpoint, you know, looking at his looking at his contract before this was done. And I, I don't blame him for wanting something to get done. Something the Eagles obviously it's, it's a trade off. We want cap space, and from Lane's standpoint, the, the lack of guaranteed money left in his deal. You know, and to his credit, he got his extension in, in 2019, in right before the season ended. It was uh, November of, of 2019. Mm -hmm. He then would restructure 2021 and 22. I mean, doing the right thing. So it's it's good that they took care of him. They guaranteed over thirty million at signing because yep. he really didn't. He had based on what I'm looking at here. He didn't. He had very. He had like maybe six million fully guaranteed left in his contract. So yeah, they they did the right thing. Also, I mean, I give the Eagles credit for they didn't have to do that, but quite frankly, it, 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 what it does is we haven't seen the breakdown yet. But what what it really does is, is you're saying, we know he's playing this year. And he's definitely going to play next year based on the guaranteed money because yes. Calvin Johnson went through this. The the Lions went through, after signing bonus when he retired. So you got to be careful when you do these extensions about guys getting older. And from the player standpoint, you don't want to have – not that Eagles would do that. I don't think they would. But you just – the particularly with a signing bonus because if it's – unless the signing bonus money is deferred a couple of years, typically it's either you get the signing bonus – within a couple of months, or you defer maybe half of it. Some teams do that. But the bottom line is, uh, the, as you said, it, it more or less for the next, through 24, 
he, he's pretty much set. But again, we need to take a look at the structure. Right. So that answers a question that we we had going into the year. How long is Lane Johnson going to play? Is he thinking about calling it quits? He played through a tremendous injury last year. Uh, you know, the Eagles did the right thing by giving him that money because he played amazingly despite that injury. But they also it also helps them. He was on the his cap number was going to be something around twenty four million this year, if I'm not mistaken. I know I'm sure two. right yeah. now. I'm sure with the extension and the moving around of the money, it'll be significantly lower this year, even though he's getting all that money. Um, it just gives them maneuverability. But it sounds like Adam, you've got Lane Johnson now for two years. We did talk. We have talked about how you need good depth. You know, right? I guess they they view uh, Jack Driscoll as a good right tackle backup if Lane's going to get hurt. So I don't know that they need to. I think about two weeks ago, we said, hey, look, don't be surprised if the Eagles are looking for Lane Johnson's successor in this year's draft. I don't know that they need to do that right now. Again, you want to you want to draft the best player available anyway, but you certainly have certain positions that you prioritize. The Eagles do. And I don't know that they, they're they going to feel like a need to get Lane Johnson's backup this year. They may have, I mean, they may, I'm, what I mean is in the draft, they could have, a, they need a veteran guy or somebody to step yeah. in if he gets hurt. Right. And maybe that's Driscoll, but I don't know if they need the next Lane Johnson right now. Uh, looking at sort of the, 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 the structure of this whole thing, he, because we know right now, without a doubt, he's going to play through next season. That That's, that's for certain. We knew he was mm-hmm. coming back anyway. That was never a question. So if you, on your point, if they wait, for the 24 draft, Lane still would be the starter. Then it becomes a question for 25. Because you don't want a first, assuming they were taking the guy in the first round, you don't want that guy sitting for more than a year. You just don't. It's not a quarterback. It's, it's obviously different. Right. So that's that's something that uh, you know, Lane and his agent will have to look at. Lane does turn 33 in May. He's coming off of uh, that, what was the ankle surgery, right? Yeah. No, the what adductor tendon. Oh, the adductor, about. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, adductor surgery. Yeah, he's had also ankle issues. Yeah, yes, the adductor, the fully torn adductor. Now, he actually feels pretty good from what we understand. So uh, we'll see what he does in, in OTAs, if at all. But the fact of the matter is, uh, th- this is good because it he, he doesn't have to worry about not having that guaranteed money because with three years left and the exact money fully guaranteed that he had left, he had... Four point six two five million of his base salary, which is fourteen point one five five million, that was fully guaranteed on third day of free agency. So less than five million, and then he had a training camp roster bonus uh, for twenty four, which is one point two five million, which became fully guaranteed also on the third day of the league year. So you're talking about six million. If I'm Lane, I would not feel comfortable playing without that. So good for the Eagles to do this, and, and good for his agent to get it done. It's also a good time to take a look back and remember that Lane was drafted fourth overall in 2013 out of Oklahoma. I was there uh, at the draft when they drafted him for uh, CSN Philly at the time. If everyone remembers, the Miami Dolphins did the Eagles a favor that night by trading all the way up from pretty far. They traded the future first and some additional haul to whoever was picking third to get ahead of the Eagles so that the Dolphins could take Oregon pass rusher Deion Jordan. Because if Deion Jordan was there at four, Chip Kelly was going to demand that Deion Jordan be the pick. And as we all know, Deion Jordan did not make it in the NFL. He had some real issues off the field that plagued him. And probably going to Miami and South Beach was probably not uh, a, a great thing for him to begin with. So it did not, did not work out well for Deion Jordan in Miami, and it worked out great. This is, this again, Adam and I are going to co-write a book one day called Plan B, the story of the success of the Eagles, right? <laughs> that's not what Plan B for Plan Asians, B. That's, that's a great, yeah. <laughs> because think about it, not only, not only that, which is the big one, they, they were going to trade for him, if you remember, some years later, I think in 2015, maybe, mm-hmm. for Deion Jordan, they tried, but... Uh, the Eagles were able to find out that Jordan was going to be suspended. Mm-hmm. So they didn't trade for him. And their plan B 
with plan A, and he's going to go to the Hall of Fame. Lane Johnson will be a Hall of Famer someday. He's... If you go look at that draft, that first round, I think Lane Johnson yeah. is the only player from that who is still in the league and still uh, – Really? It, uh, it's actually worth going through. I'm going to bring it up really quickly because yeah. it is almost unbelievable how bad that first round oh, the first round. Yes. Was. Yeah, yeah, the, the whole first round. Ooh. Ooh, jeez. All right, Eric Fisher was the number one pick. Now, he, Eric was okay, but nothing great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Certainly not better than Lane. Luke Jokel to Jacksonville, second pick. Um, I don't even – is he? he's out of the league, right? Yeah, he's what out of years. the league. In fact, he was – he was he hasn't played in five years. He was so overhyped. Mm-hmm. Ziggy Ansa had shoulder problems. He was he was a little older. Yep. Did okay, but not, yep. just nothing special. Right, Ansa was is- fifth. Barcavius uh, Mingo six, yep. No, oh, too. Th- you know, it's never good when they're talking about your thin wrists. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this, Jonathan Cooper. I'll mm-hmm. say this about him, and I know Greg liked him. Cassell liked him. He was a guy that the scouting community loved. They just got it wrong because uh, yeah. they kept moving him position wise. Yep. D. Yep. D. Milliner never made it. Had all those injuries from Alabama. Tavon Austin was a gadget player who drafts a gadget player at eight. That was a miss. Yep. DJ Fluker was a former Eagle, right? Or was it or was it Warmack? No, Chance Warmack. He was yeah. first the former Eagle, right? 10th. DJ Hayden was drafted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fluker, DJ Warmack Hayden. back to back. Sheldon Richardson was a good player, had some maturity issues uh, early in his career. Mm-hmm. Started Lou Tulele. Um, decent run stopper. If you just go, the, the, the dumbest pick ever. The, the, the one that made, in fact, I'm going to give you a quick story. Because I remember talking to the Bills then. When they put when they drafted EJ Manuel at 16, everyone in the front office pointed at each other. Nobody knows who the hell made the pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, AJ Smith was long gone. It was um, it was oh, uh, Doug Nicks. Whaley, wasn't it? Doug Whaley. I think it was Buddy Nix actually. Oh, you're right. It was his last draft, and then he got fired after. I'm, yes, hundred percent. Yeah. And they all played on Buddy because he was leaving, and a great, really nice guy and a good broadcaster. But he should have been a third round pick. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, it's funny you bring this draft up because when. You were talking earlier, talking about Bendy and all this. The guy who went at 17, Jarvis Jones, was another hype guy out of Georgia. Yep. Never really made it. Very big disappointment. Right. Then Eric Reed, the safety for San Francisco, was okay. Nothing great. I mean, he was okay. Uh, Justin Pugh is one of the few who is actually still in the league. He plays for the Cardinals, if I'm not mistaken, as a guard. Right? Yep. He struggled early on with the Giants, though. He was not – it was looking a little rough for him early with the Giants, if I recall. Injuries, um, uh, unfortunately, with with uh, Justin Pugh has had some, but then, but from I think he might be from Bucks County. I know he's from the area. Yeah, yeah, he's a Bucks County guy. Kyle Long had injuries that he came back last year uh, in twenty one. Mm-hmm. Tyler Eifert also injuries, and his career. Desmond Trufant, one of the Trufant brothers, really good player, and then Philly's own Sharif Floyd, unfortunately, had a bad knee injury. Right. Bjorn yeah. Warner was a total reach out of Florida right. State. Xavier yep. Rhodes, a nice player. That was that was a good pick. All right, so you have to get to all the way to 25, yeah. Xavier Rhodes, before you get a guy who I think made a Pro Bowl between Lane Johnson at four and then 25, Xavier Rhodes, Minnesota. And then D-Hop. D-Hop at 27 was a D-Hop at 27 pick. was good, all yeah. Yep. yep. And then a guy who's still in the league before we move on the rest of the show here, Gerdarrell Patterson, who, like Judo Smith, became a player late in his career. Straight mm-hmm. but true. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I don't want to forget, even though I guess he never made a Pro Bowl, but he was pretty good. The 31st pick of the draft was Travis Frederick from uh, yeah, good player. Cowboy yeah. Say. Yeah, good player. But really, if you look at that that first round, you're talking about, what, four guys who were fulfilled? Their, uh, Trufant was a good cornerback. He just was hurt a lot. So if you want to throw Trufant in, Trufant in there, I'm fine good with player. that too. It's still basically Lane Johnson, Trufant, Xavier Rhodes, D-Hop, and Corderell. That, that's really... Lodo One more. was okay. Star Lodo Lely was okay, you know, but a little overdrafted there at that high. With, but with, with without looking, uh-huh. what two former Eagle teammates went back to back in this draft? Former Eagles teammates went back to back in look, this don't draft. Look, yeah. No, I'm not looking. Um, what year is this? 2013. Well, I, yeah, th- this draft in this. Okay, I'm going to give it away to move this along. Second round. Ertz. No, yeah, Ertz, yep. and um, I know Ertz was the second round pick, and it's got to be a running back, right? 
No, they no. traded for him. He goes, why not trading? Sidney Jones? No, that no, no, was okay. I it's a trick question. They they were well, they were former teammates. They wound up trading for this cornerback. Oh, Ronald Darius Darby? Slay. Darius Slay. Oh, Slay. wow, Slay, of course. Yeah, that's a good I didn't know that until looking at it. That's pretty cool. Man, that's crazy. That is kind of yeah. funny. That is funny. So yeah, basically, by the way, what we really should have done is how many of those guys in the first round got second contracts uh, oh. with with the team that drafted them. I probably have to be less than five or six. So unbelievable. All right. Well, again, plan B worked out. Lane Johnson. So we know Lane Johnson is now going to be the right tackle uh, for the Eagles going forward for a couple of years. Do Do you agree with me on sort of lessens the 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 pull for the Eagles to maybe take a offensive tackle in the first round yes yeah Yeah. i i always say never say never but if you're taking offensive tackle in the first round the guy's got to sit he he, not only my law's not going anywhere obviously so for that means he would sit for a minimum of two 23 and 24 i i i could see next year potentially but this it would it would be a big surprise as we speak right now almost the end of march here right about about a month away from the draft yeah that would definitely surprise me yeah same here. I'm still the, the draft's going to be fascinating, <laughs> just to, to try to figure out who the Eagles are going to be uh, targeting and who they like, and we'll we'll get into that as we get closer to it. All right, um, so we'll move on from Lane Johnson, and we'll pause real quick for a word from some of our great sponsors. All right, um, let's talk about one of the Eagles signings this past week. Uh, it's a real. I, I find this signing fascinating on so many levels adam i i I, they signed terrell Edmonds, the safety from the steelers to a one-year deal if you go look at terrell Edmonds' career in pittsburgh he started every single year he has a ton of starting experience and if you go look at some of the safeties you signed already in the free agent market like you want to include marcus epps i mean you would it doesn't almost compute. I mean, Terrell Evans is not a great player. He's never made Pro Bowls, but a, neither did half the safeties who have signed during this this free agent market. And yet, it seems like he seems to me like a player who the league has said has already reached his ceiling. Like you know what you're getting from Terrell Evans. He's uh, we'll get we'll get into a scouting report on him in a second, but he is what he is. You're probably not going to get anything better, and you're probably not going to get much worse until he gets older. But he kind of is what he is if if that makes sense whereas maybe like marcus epps yeah. is younger and maybe have more potential or more versatile some other guys like von bell can probably cover better i just i'm just surprising to see a guy with this many starts have to take a one year i don't want to call it a veteran minimum contract but it's a pretty low contract for a guy of that many starts yeah so from our pro uh scouting source who's our, our go-to guy with this stuff. He, yeah, he gave us some good stuff here. So, positive, very durable, versatility, could cover slot, could cover tight ends. He's got really good size, uh, rocked, pretty rocked up, mm-hmm. really good physical shape. Negatives, uh, never lived up the athletic numbers, never came anything close to playing to a first-round pick. He's not a playmaker, not super instinctive. He could hit, super high character, was a running back in high school, uh, then, then got converted to safety uh, in, at Virginia Tech. Uh, he just—it's one of these guys. The the work, the combine workout was fantastic. He never played to that. Right. It's a nice player. He was our number one in safety left and free agency on our our board. But when you look at it, yes, he could cover tight end, he could cover slot, and he could do some of the things that Gardner Johnson did. But he's not obviously you can't you can't replace him. He's just he's. He's elite at what he does. And Evans, you can play him in the box. You can move him. You can move him back. You can do what you want with him. And yes, he can cover people, but he's just there's no special traits about him. I think that's kind of what you're getting to. Yeah. And just to give you an idea of how a little interest there, there was even him last year, the the uh, the Steelers let him play out the fifth year option, and he resigned for one year at two point five four million last year. Right. Uh, we haven't we haven't got his contract breakdown, but the, the t- it's all about tape study. It's it's kind of what he's become, and this is why when you get to this area, you're pretty much taking a one year deal. Now, I will def- I will say one thing with him. 
the Steelers play their defense one way, who knows what happens? I'll get not that he could be Malcolm Jenkins. Malcolm Jenkins was a corner in college, got converted to safety after one season with the Saints. Saints decided not to bring him back. In 2014, Eagles, he comes here and becomes one of the best safeties in the football. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying Edmonds will be, but sometimes when guys change systems, become better football players. Who knows? Well, interestingly, the Steelers gave uh, a different safety more, mo- a lot more money. De- Demonte Casey, uh, they gave him about six million, if I'm not mistaken, over two years, okay, so really? three million a year. So, Jeez. but but I I knew this. They like him, and he is a guy who's a cover safety. I think he's only 5'11", 180 uh, of that that remark. You know, he had gotten hurt last year, or else he probably would have had even more defensive snaps, and that was one of the reasons Edmonds played. Uh, as much as he did last year, they were really trying to work Casey in. They were playing some three safeties, okay. as, as I understand it. So um, I, I guess what, what is sort of mind-boggling to me is, and then here's another thing on the scouting report. As you mentioned, um, box safety, strong guy, uh, does miss tackles. I was told, you know, you expect a box safety to be a better tackler, but there are times where he misses tackles that can be frustrating but w- with the defense that the Eagles are playing, Adam, this which is still the Vangio concept of quarters and two high safeties, you do wonder how much Edmonds fits that. I mean, he is, again, more of a strong safety. Uh, I don't know how much quarters great, coverage yeah. the Steelers play. Uh, it's not coverage. Deep co- post coverage is not his forte. Uh, I don't know how much experience he has kind of spinning interchangeably, you know, where one guy's deep, one guy's post or box, and then they switch at the last second. I don't know how much disguise and deception he's used to with uh, who, who runs the Steelers defense. Uh, I know it's Mike Tomlin, but who? it's basically Mike Tomlin. I don't think he's a disguise and deception guy uh, as much as, as a Fangio type defense is. So Terrell Austin. Uh, yeah, Terrell Austin. Yeah, Terrell Austin, right, right. So I don't I don't know. I mean, I think that that goes to explain why this is also a one-year deal and not that much money. And certainly the Eagles could go out and draft or acquire, trade, whatever, uh, a safety who, who more fits the scheme. But this feels like uh, the Eagles needed a safety. They needed someone to be able to – who can just line up. You need somebody to line up and be able to play with, sort of scheme yeah. independent. And Terrell Evans fits that because if you didn't, then you'd be lining up with, I don't know right now, like Kevon Wallace and Justin Evans, like I, that that or, or Reed Blankenship. That's just not acceptable for exactly. for a team that has exactly. you know Bradbury and Slay a corner and and expects to still be, you know, right in the thick of it for the NFC. We'll learn more about his usage, Evans, in terms of the Eagles' defense. We have a pretty good idea with Steelers based on the tape study from people we spoke with how he was used. But he, to me, he's more of a box guy than a coverage guy. I know, I know that I know the numbers show and the tape shows that he is covered tight ends, and he's when he asked to do it, he cover the slot. Mm-hmm. But there's just when you look at this thing, it's going to be completely new at safety with two new guys in there, and also you would have to think at some point they're going to add one more safety, whether it's a draft or free agency, because well, Kevon Wallace is not guaranteed to make it. He's on the final year of his deal. Marquise Blair's a guy I know they want to look at because he's got some really good traits, but He's had a significant injury history, so that you, you don't know about him. Sasha is a special teamer. So, and you mentioned Evans, and and Blankenship is a good third safety, but he he's not a covered safety. But the way it's explained to me on a, a Blankenship, you want your if your third safety is going to come a nickel, he's got to be able to cover. Like he's he can't be a box safety. Like he's got to be able to cover. And I don't know with with Garner Johnson gone now, I don't know who that covered safety is going to yeah. be. I think it's a it's a great point. I mean, that was such a bread and butter of their defense last year. The reason why they were so great defensively was their turnover differential. We talked about that all year long. Terrell Edmonds has five career interceptions. CJ Gardner Johnson had six and eight games. So that just shows you the steep drop off you're getting from a playmaking standpoint. Reed Blankenship. I know people like what they saw. Totally agree with you. I don't think you can just put him in there and say he's your starting safety and you're getting the same level of play that you got from C.J. Gardner-Johnson or or some of the better starting safeties around the league. It seems like they have a lot of guys who can run and tackle and cover in short area, but they don't have a lot of guys who can make plays and give you what C.J. Gardner-Johnson gave you, and they got to find that because if you're going to play this this Fangio-style defense, you you need some safeties who can run, cover, and make plays. I and mean, that was, to me, when you talk about the Eagles' defense last year, 
what were they number one against the pass, right? It was yep. all about their ability to flip the field and get, you know, give the offense some great field position. They had a ton of turnovers, not just interceptions. They made plays. So right now you're looking at the secondary and you're saying good corners, but they're, they don't have the same type of safety play. But again, I'm interested. I'm just interested to see. Yeah. Well, I'm interested on Edmonds on how they line him up just in terms of if they're going to play him in the box, they're going to play him midfield or they could play him deeper because Evans has Evans was asked to, asked to be he did some nickel last year which is which was new for him but the, again this defense is different this defense is different from Pittsburgh so to move forward here to me they should add a safety because remember Evans and e- Evans and Edmonds are on one-year deals and oh by the way you might remember Terrell's dad Carl Edmonds a tight end mm-hmm. seven Definitely. years in the NFL I guess we're, we don't want to neglect to mention the possibility that maybe Avante Maddox moves to a safety spot where he did play his rookie year. Uh, I could see it happening as a sort of last resort, but then you have to fill your nickel position so that they would need someone, one, whether it's Zach McPherson or somebody else, to really step up and be able to – because that's also a vital position within the defense. So uh, maybe it's – yep. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, now, they brought in Greedy Williams – who we've already talked about is not a nickel type of corner, but um, we have, we have the contract numbers in on that. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the incentives if there are any, but it's almost the same exact structure that Rashad Penny got. Uh, hmm. the, the, the base value is, is 1.35 million. One, 1.08 base, 500 K fully guaranteed at signing 100 grand signing bonus. Exactly the same as Penny 600 fully guaranteed at signing. This is the thing I love because you know, I wonder if they'll do this and other teams will do this if they look at this deal. 170 grand in per game roster bonus, so 10 10,000 per game for a total of 1.35 million. So both have major injury issues. Obviously, Penny's is worse. He missed mm-hmm. more time, but these are the old one year make good deals, man. These guys, uh, to me, they, they should make the team and they should have a pretty decent role, particularly Penny. But again, they got to show that they can stay healthy. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the injuries that these guys have had don't seem like those injuries where it's not out of like a lack of condition. It's not their fault, you know, but yet the contracts that they sign sure incentivize them to do whatever they've got to do to stay healthy. I do wonder, Adam, if the recent reputation of the Eagles medical staff, sports science staff, training staff is helping bringing in guys here for these one-year deals as opposed to somewhere else because they've done a really good job with injured guy, keeping them healthy for the most part. I mean, you're never going to avoid all injuries, but the Eagles for the most part were one of the healthier teams last year. Yes. Yes. Uh, Now with Penny, there was a conditioning issue in terms of his weight when the Seahawks got him. He was well into the two thirties. Now Williams is tall and, and, and lean. Right. Don't know what, you know, why he's continued to get hurt, but teams like signing guys with on one year deals who have a lot to prove, and particularly when they're young and they know they want to get a good deal going for 24. So, yeah, this is, I, I like to think, but again, these deals cannot stop them from doing what they need. They need, they really could use a veteran third corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rudy Williams technically would be, but again, he's, He's a guy with his injury his history you can't count on. Then with Penny, yeah, the Eagles have numbers at running back, but who's their lead back? That is yet to be determined, my friend. Right? I mean, yeah. uh, well, I mean, I think we all f- believe that Kenny Gainwell will see a significant up, uh, whether he gets the first carry of a game or not. But by the end of the game, don't you feel like Kenny Gainwell is going to have the most touch? Like as we look at it right now, he stands to have the most touches. At running back, unless somebody really seizes that spot. Well, Penny to me, because based on what he did late in 2021 for over a five week period, you know, he led the NFL rushing. It was unbelievable. I know you got to be careful with him because there's injury history, but there could be games where he gets 15, 20 carries. I'm sure because he's done before, but you know, he you want to be careful with him because it was well, I don't know what it is with his his body, just <laughs> a lot of major injuries not a lot of minor a lot of major injuries but yeah. 
it just, you know, as we look at the needs uh, going forward here, I, they they have to still look at running back. I, I, to me, I would not be, if you and I were running the show, I would not be comfortable. Uh, I know that they have, the Eagles have the ability to morph into whatever they want on offense. Some weeks they want to be a running team. More often than not, they want to be a passing team. But we've seen them decide, hey, we're going to run the football down their, stroke, their throats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sermon's unproven. Totally yep. unproven. Yep. Austin Scott is a really good third back. Could be second back if you need him to be. Gainwell closed the season well, but he's got to be more consistent. Penny, we know his injury history. And Kenny Brooks is obviously highly unlikely to make the team. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Right now, to me, with Penny's injury history, Gainwell hasn't shown that he can handle a lot of volume. Sermon's a total unknown. And Boston Scott, you kind of know who he is. I don't see a lead back here that you could definitely count on. Well, I agree with you, but I would still look at Gainwell because of his ability to catch the ball uh, as someone who's going to the most likeliest candidate to be the lead guy only because Rashad does not catch the ball very well or or very much. So you're only, you're not going to have him out there on third down, you're not going to have him out there on second and long unless you're just trying to get a few yards. So there's a little bit of a limit offensively of what you're going to be able to do if you want those five outlets, Rashad Penny is not one of them. And with this offense and the explosive playmakers, I think you'd want a back who could catch the ball to give you that diversity. Do I know, do, do, am I telegraphing whether I'm running or passing? You are not doing that when you have Kenneth Gainwell in the game. You might be doing that if you had Rashad Penny in the game or Trey Sermon in the game. Uh, so really your two most versatile backs are, are Gainwell and Boston Scott. Yes, and that's what third down and, and passing situations are. So yeah, right. I just think there's, for those weeks they want to run the ball a lot, I, I don't know that you could count on any of these guys. That's why, to me, it would not surprise me if they added one more back, whether it's the rest of free agency or the draft. Uh, but it, as you said at the start of the show, this is going to be a really interesting Eagles team going forward because there's still time left for free, free agents, for mostly depth purposes or competition. Right. But the draft is going to give you a lot of clues, folks, because they have, they have as you set up, the show they still have a lot of questions on defense no doubt about it all right speaking of uh questions we'll go through a few more remaining team needs and then uh i have a couple of uh owners meeting questions for you that we'll uh hit up in a second first we want to tell everybody to check out our friends at phlsportsnation.com they're enhancing the fans experience with their coverage of all philadelphia sports teams for the fan by the fan is their motto so make sure you check them out at phlsportsnation.com or on Twitter at PHL Sports Nation. We'll pause real quick for another word from our great sponsors, our friends at Sky Motor Cars. Sky Motor Cars in Westchester is a different sort of dealership. All it takes is one look at their Highline pre-owned vehicles that people all over the country want to see. Owner Brett Schilder, make sure you don't spend a dime of your money before you purchase the car. Sky Motor Cars allows you to make all the decisions regarding your next vehicle. At Sky Motor Cars, you never have to spend more than necessary. Visit SkyMotorCars.com today or call 610-918-7225. And if you hop into Sky Motor Cars out there in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You will get the best deal. So... They've covered up, you know, on defense. They've they've brought in guys, a lot of guys here. Uh, they still offensively, we talked about the running back position, but still seem to need a slot receiver. They lost Zach Pascal to the Cardinals. They will return Quez Watkins. I think you and I both agree that Quez is not a slot receiver. He's an outside receiver who is force fed into the slot at times. I'm not even sure he's a vertical slot. I just think you need a really good route runner um, to be a vertical slot. I would have actually, Adam. I, I know he would have never come back here, but I would have, I would have looked at Nelson Aguilar to bring him back on a one-year deal. I think that's all he signed, right? A one-year deal. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have looked at. He's perfect for this offense in the slot. I know. Yeah, he would have been perfect. Both, and he yeah. was a vertical slot. Yeah, no, he, he would have been smart uh, because when you look at the veteran slot receivers that are out there. There's kind of like, oh, I see why this guy's unsigned. He's been hurt. Like, Jamison Crowder, I, I, I think he went to the Giants. He's had an incredibly 
bad injury history. Yes. Good slot receiver, very productive. Definitely good, yeah, absolutely. Good player, yeah. Just can't stay on the field. So if you look at the slots that are out there, Jarvis Landry, would be he could play inside or outside. He started later in spirit playing on the outside mm -hmm. uh, with Cleveland because they had some injury issues. So he would be a good one, your stopgap. Other than that, it's slot. Pure slot, guys. Cole Beasley came out of retirement. I don't see that. Mm -hmm. Scotty Miller can do it. He could play inside or outside, formerly the Bucks. Uh, that pretty much. Miller, Miller pretty Scotty much Miller is a free agent right now. Yeah, I like he's got good quicks, short, short area quickness. Now, I know when when I would talk to Bucks about him, they say no, man, he's more of a outside than slot, but he's got oh. really good interior. He's got good short area quickness, but again, he could play either either area. It's just a lot of guys. That, the other guys that are available. Leo Jones, major injury history near the end. Kenny Galladay, forget it. Based on what happened, uh, they were the Giants. I mean, he just completely was a disaster. He just never became the player they thought he wasn't with all that money. Mm -hmm. You know who's out there? And I was it you who said this? Um, Olim, uh, uh, Zacchaeus, the receiver for the Falcons. Oh, Zacchaeus. No, that, I think you here? actually pointed that out. Is he, is he say, still No, but someone said he's from Philly. Did, oh, St. Joe's Prep. Did someone tell me what, Zacchaeus went to St. Joe's Prep? Possible. Possibly. Um, he's out name. there. He's an outsider. Go ahead. That's a good name. I mean, that, that, that he's he's a veteran. He can run. Yeah, he can run. Yeah, he would cost some coin at this point, but I'm just – I like Now, this guy I like a lot, but he's really not a slot. He actually became a vertical threat for the Chiefs. It's Justin Watson. Justin, Justin Watson. Watson. Oh, yeah, from the Chiefs. Out of right. Penn. Yeah, right. Could run. 6'3, could run. T.Y. Hilton, if he, I don't know if he still wants to play. Chris Conley, who I mentioned earlier on a previous show, who's built like Pascal. Mm -hmm. But he's more of an outside than in. He's he's a good blocking receiver, could be a fourth and could run. But yeah, you're 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 not looking much at, at much right now, other than your guy Laquan Treadwell to play on the outside. Nah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. All right, how about defense? Uh, now, I know there's a lot of sort of buzz that the Titans would love to trade Jeffrey Simmons because their new GM, Rand Carthon, kind of wants to hit the reset button. And people are like, oh, this is the type of move that Howie has been making, right? You find that guy. I, the thing about Jeffrey Simmons is I would think the Titans would ask for a whole lot more than what the Saints got for C.J. Garner-Johnson. We're talking about a lineman here who's considered one of the best in the league so and and i don't know that there's any kind of contract dispute maybe you have intel on that the, there was clearly something there with cj and the saints where it just wasn't working out he had a little bit of a reputation i i don't know if this is a similar situation where how he's just going to swoop in and get jeffrey simmons if he's even available for like a fourth round pick or some kind of swap in the third round like they got um they got from the ravens they got jernigan from i guess so what happened there was, I guess, in social media, supposedly Simmons deleted his his one of his social media accounts or something. Oh, really? Yeah. So, you know, unfollowed it. You know how that works. Sometimes yeah. you don't get what you want. Yeah. The players do that. But he is an incredible football player. Jeffrey Simmons, he had the one off the field issue, which was a which un, it was unfortunate. I remember talking to the Titans about they did their homework. They understood why it happened. They weren't excusing it, but they they knew it was just a lack of judgment. They mm -hmm. went through it with them. They were rewarded on their patience with him. He's a tremendous football player. And by all accounts, a guy that done all the right things off the field since mm -hmm. he was since he's been a Titan. Yep. Just a terrific football player. Uh, I know Greg Cosell loves Simmons. Yeah. But as you said, it would cost a lot. You got to pay him one. Yeah. And but I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, if they would entertain it, if they would entertain it, because remember now, Jordan Davis, you don't, you just don't know about him yet. Fletcher Cox is on a one-year deal. Milton Williams is a good three. That would be, and you know how the Eagles like that interior push. Yeah. Front. Yeah. I mean, he obviously would start next to Jordan Davis with, yeah. it would be like a Davis in the middle flanked by Cox and Simmons. But the point I was making is you're not fleecing the Titans for Jeffrey Simmons. You're not just getting him for a fourth rounder or anything like that it's uh, i imagine that what what's going on is that if he's not if they can't get to a, a contract agreement they're still they still have leverage over him the the fifth year option correct or is this his yeah year? oh yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it, 
he, he's well, yeah. Well, th this will be his fifth year, so he would be on the fifth year option. Right. So they wouldn't even have to tag him, him, even if they don't sign him. Tag him they the don't, future. Yeah. 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 I I don't know why they would because you have to if you're a Titans fan if you traded AJ Brown you your hearts were broken. Right. Now you're gonna trade the best defense. Like what? Why would they do that? But never say never. I guess. There you go. Now, I mean, maybe some people would be happy, would be all right if the Eagles gave up their first one of their first round picks for him. I, I don't know. I sure would. You can't, you I mean, yeah, me. sure. I mean, he's worth it. He's definitely worth it. But oh, then now you only have four man. picks. <laughs> you're really, you're really no, hurt in there. But picks. but as Howie said many times, they're gonna have a ton of. Uh, they're gonna have a lot of up to four is the rule for the compensatory picks for next season. So we'll have plenty of them. But it, it's interesting. I, I Rand Carthon is a new GM, so you don't know what he's thinking. Uh huh. But there are going to be a bad football team as it is. And does he look at it and say, well, how many years can we go with them? You know, we, if we if they can't get an extension, some teams will call. Teams will call. That's the way it works. Yeah. Well, that is pretty interesting. All right. So we, but we, but right pet, like right church, wrong pew sort of thing. Like this is the thinking that we've been telling fans to have, right? And listeners to have is that how he's going to try to find a creative way to upgrade the roster to get a player, whether it's safety, linebacker, whatever, line, defensive line, anything that is not necessarily traditional as in through the draft or just a free agent signing. So that is, it is an interesting name to watch out for. Just probably going to sure. cost you a lot. All right. Um, anything else we want to get through? Uh, did, did, were there any signings from the Eagles? Like the Zach Pascal one already had happened last time we did our pod. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. In fact, so it, there are five, Eagles are unsigned right now. Okay. Brett Kern counts as one of them. Robert Quinn counts as another. Uh huh. Linval Joseph and Dominic and Sue. Right. And there is, I think there's one more guy. Was there another one? I thought that was it. Okay. Maybe four. Okay. Four. Okay. Yeah. This is four. Because Minshew, Colts, Sanders, Panthers, Scott resigned with the Eagles, Pascal signed Cardinals, Sayo Malo signed with the Steelers. He got mm -hmm. Isaac Steele. You, you're right about Casey. K Demonte Casey, you're right. They must love him. He got three million a year. That's a, that's a really good deal. I know. Yeah, I knew they liked him. I know they like him a lot. Wow, yeah. that's a that's a really good deal for a guy who's been hurt. He's a Dan Quinn guy. Yeah. So Isaac got a three year deal, but worth just he got a seven million dollars uh, six point nine five million dollars signing bonus. That's it. That's the guaranteed money. So it's basically a one year structure. Mm -hmm. And and. Uh, Andre Dillard got a three-year deal, but he got, also has a one-year structure, $5.99 million signing bonus, $1.01 million base salary, fully guaranteed. But uh, he's got a base conversion. He's got an injury guarantee in year two that converts to full on the 50 of free agency. So the Titans have to make a decision on this contract after year one. Mm. Now, they could walk away with not owning him anything uh, it, if he's – if they have to make a decision on on next year's salary that guaranteed by the fifth day of the year. So a lot of sort of one year structures with these guys. I uh, can't imagine the NFLPA loves that too much, but it does give players a chance to hit free agency next year. Just but too many. When the market gets that flooded, it's the money's not great for you know, it's it becomes a buyer's market, not a seller's market. Or it becomes a I don't know, uh yeah, a buyer's market. So or less, um, yeah. wait, can you can you repeat the Sayamalu contract again? You said it was a five point nine million dollars signing bonus. Yeah, he, Isaac Sayamalu. And what's his year one salary? Isaac's is year one is one point three zero million. So he basically signed a one year seven million dollar deal. Uh, seven eight over eight 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 million. Okay, eight million. that's that's. Not what we thought going into, you know, obviously the injury history really played, must have played a role in there. Must well, remember though, what, what we said was just because you're the number one player in the position doesn't mean you're the, you're going to get paid like one. Correct. It was a depressed market and he, Isaac turns 30 in October and he has a major injury history. And ironically, this is the, this past season, I believe he played all 17 games. But yeah. How about that? With, I mean, he was worth on the open market based on play, twelve or thirteen million a year. But the mm -hmm. injury history knocked him back because the guy that got paid, and the, it, the guy of the Bears, right? I'm sorry, the, the the Bears got guard, right? 
No, Nate. Uh, Nate. Nate Davis did. He he's smaller and he's younger though. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got ten million a year. But no, the guy who got paid last year, Brandon Sheriff, got a. He, now he's had a lot of injury problems, mm-hmm. but his reputation is so ridiculous. He got he. This is when the Jaguars were spending like crazy. Right. They, uh, his agent found a team that would pay him sixteen million a year. Oh my! I forgot that sixteen, 16 million a million. year. Two year structure, thirty million over the first two years. Wow. Yeah, and that's sometimes he's a good player though. He is a good player. No, no, older. there's no doubt about it. But he's wow, older, I didn't. I forgot it was that much. Yeah. Holy cow. Wow. Anyway. Anyway. All right. Uh, you're at the owners' meetings. What's going to be the 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 bigger you know the big news to come out of that you know and rule changes uniforms what 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 oh what yeah was hilarious you, 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 yeah the Eagles uh they want the punters and kickers to have they could wear zeros no the two things Lamar Jackson I want to I want to I'm going to be I'm curious to see if there's any momentum momentum here for a trade now understand Lamar Lamar cannot I mean it can't happen unless he signs the franchise tender. Mm-hmm. So basically, it's a no trade clause without having one, right? Technically, so if even if they find a team, they have to present it to them, and that team A has to give a compensation. So GM said to me at the combine, he goes, "If he if he gets moved, don't be surprised if it's less than two first round picks, which is obviously the franchise of non exclusive tag. Mm-hmm. You know, you would you would get two first round picks if you didn't match an offer sheet." He goes, "He just didn't see two team a, a team giving up two first because he goes, if my team needed a quarterback." I would give him a first and third. He just, just he was just hypo, hypothetically saying, "Yeah, I I think he'd be worth first and third. He said it's it's hard to give up two firsts. It's just hard. And then the other thing is, you have to be so committed to the run. Though I I'll, I I'm sort of a Lamar defender. I like the way he throws the football. I it's just that. that they they've made this decision. They're running the hell out of the football with him being the focal point, mm-hmm. and. The, the question would be if there's any team that wants them, are they willing to adjust that or or would they potentially look at it and say, you know what, we think he could be a better passer than Baltimore's given him credit for. Let's we do want to throw the ball more. I I think he'd do it. He, I'll never forget that game with Wentz two years ago. It was Indy and Baltimore in a Monday night game. It was a shockingly a pass fest because with Wentz's issues with accuracy, or the, he actually played really well for Colts, but with with Wentz's inaccuracy, you never know if they're going to let him throw the football. Frank Reich out of a lot of throws, and it was Lamar and him going back and forth. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm like the the ball. I like the way Lamar snaps it off. But and the other thing with the Ravens is, if your Ravens fans are listening, they need some receivers. You need help the quarterback. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, I'm telling you, if I were the Atlanta Falcons, I would make that's, a strong. That's I would, the I one. Would do it. That's the rumor out there. Again, nothing, nothing concrete. That a lot of people are saying because of Desmond Ritter being the quarterback, he was a third round pick. Mm-hmm. You're you're in a total rebuild. Why don't you revitalize the organization and go get your quarterback? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you already built your wet right. You got Kyle Pitts coming back. You've got Drake. Um, who's London? the kid they drafted? Drake London. Yep. Yeah. So you got two pretty good receivers there. I know they signed Mac Hollins. He's, a, he's you know giving number run. number three. They got Johnu Smith. Uh, from the from the Patriots in a trade, they beefed up their offensive line. You know they they signed Jesse Bates to their, as a safety. They got Heineke as a backup. I, Onyemata. I mean they went crazy in free agency, and so mm-hmm. it seems like they're just waiting for the quarterback to come in and rescue them because they could probably be a pretty good team. Plus the division stinks now, right? The Tampa oh. Bay's going to stink. And Carolina might be decent if they once they get their quarterback, but I don't know. Are you putting Lamar Jackson on the Falcons? And I think that they're going to be pretty good. Well, although I think the Saints, Car- they'll be better with Derek Saints Carr. Right, right, right. And then Carolina's got an excellent defense. Miles Sanders at running back. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that that's right. So, yeah, that th- those stories, some of the rule changes, of course. More on Daniel Snyder. Is he Because he's not here. I think Jason Wright, the president, played for the Browns. You might remember him as a running back. Mm-hmm. He'll represent the team, I think, here. So, uh We'll see if there's anything else on that, but yeah, that's that's it. I mean, you you know these coaches' breakfasts that they've trimmed them. They used to be an hour, then to forty five minutes, another half an hour. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, because the coaches would complain they're too long. So yeah, uh, that's they don't that. get to eat. Chip Kelly never got to eat. <laughs> he would well, sit there funny. with a plate of food, and then the, he would yeah. say, "All right, what questions that's you have?" The and then he would never be able to eat. <laughs> a couple years, 
because whatever coach I really wanted to talk, it might have been Andy when he's with the Eagles or whatever coach. I, I would. Oh, I remember. Okay, I'll give you a quick story. Ron Rivera was his first year in 2011. Mm-hmm. I didn't know him. I just wanted to because he was a new head coach, and they were probably going to take Cam Newton. And I, I just asked. I thought an innocuous question, and he took it a different way, and he actually made news. It was something like, "If Cam is your first round pick, is your if if is your pick, would you play him right away?" He goes, "Oh, Cam's playing. He's absolutely playing. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's already, and, and he did, he had to backtrack what he said. It was so funny, and and." And I felt so he's such a nice guy, and he didn't he was not he didn't know the way it works with the media. Right. I wasn't asking a leading question. I was just wondering, like, do you think he's ready? Because mm-hmm. I, the funny thing was, for some reason, there were only like two or three beat reporters. You know, you know, you know, Darren, 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 Darren Gant, who now yeah. works for the Panthers, of course, for the website. It was me, Darren, and maybe a couple other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Reed, the AP writer, but they didn't have like the Philly contingent when there's an Eagles head coach, like. There might be thirty people surrounding the head coach. Mm-hmm. We were just peppering around with questions, and he was wonderful. Like he, some he clearly should have not answered. He answered it because he didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. And, and Nick, <laughs> and, and uh, coming over here with Sirianni, he 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 knows it now. He's although sometimes I love when he'll go like at a press conference. You know, I probably shouldn't say this, but yeah, 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 yeah. Like no, that. that was that's funny. That's that's a Freudian slip if there ever was one. All right, good stuff. So I'm sure you'll have some interesting stuff by the next pod uh, based on those those breakfasts with the coaches and then whatever comes out. And then uh, the, the cycle will continue. We'll have uh, even more. But remember, in between now and the next pod, we got Intel with Greg Cosell. We'll be doing cornerbacks, and that'll be out Wednesday morning. That's going to do it for this episode of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. As always, we thank you for flying with us. Inside the bird.